Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. If you watched my video last week about the comparison between the stress oxide sprays and the stress oxide inks, then you would have seen these tags that I created during that video. It was actually a live stream and you can watch it back in my channel. I'm linking that here at the top of my video screen. Now, these are all nice, but I really wanted to kind of finish the map and finish the album. I did another video as well with the Distressed Oxide Sprays on other tags, and I created a really cute mini tag album afterwards. This disc-bound tag journal from Joggles. And here's another one, and the difference is that this tag one just goes in a different direction. They're the same size tags, which are perfect to do demos, and I just wanted to show you what I'm going to do with this. So for my other tag album, which is this one over here, I ended up adding a lot more distress to it by doodling, by doing some die cutting with Tim Holtz dies, and basically journaled on it and created this really cute tagged album. And I really liked how it turned out. This is just so much fun to do. And I used a gel plate to create most of these textures. So this is how the album looks in the front like this. And then you go along and you can watch how I created this mini album from the other tags in the video below as well. However, I wanted to do something similar. And as you can see, these tags go in a different direction and I have the discs to connect them, but they're not really finished. They were more for demonstrating. So what I want to show today is I'm also going to use the gel plate, but I want to use it differently today. I want to use some of the texture stamps. These are by Joggles. And I also have some texture stamps by Carable Studios. They're also sold by Joggles, but they come from France. So these are circular. They have many different ones. I try to pick the ones that are not sold out on their website, but they have a lot of different ones that you can pick from and they're super, super gorgeous. So I want to show you how I'm going to use those. I'm going to grab my gel plate. This is a six by six gel plate. And last week I used the foam stamps to kind of create texture on my background. This time I'm going to use the texture stamps. So it's just a different technique that basically gives you ideas of how to finish up projects, how to do art journaling and so forth. So there's a lot of different ideas and you can watch the different videos to get those ideas as well. But instead of using sprays like I did in my other tag one, I am actually going to use distress oxide inks because I find you can get a better print with the inks than with the sprays. So I'm going to grab a couple of colors. This is the evergreen bow and the chipped sapphire. Which, and that will be for my first tag. Let's pick this one just because it already has a little bit of blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do both sides of each tag. So this is really easy and really fun to play with. I'm going to just basically add ink to my gel plate. You can either tap it or if you want to rub it. I'm going to use the second color here at the top. I don't really want them to mix just because then you end up with tainted ink pads. You could use uh, blending tools and that would work as well. However, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be creating textures. So I'm going to start with the textures from from joggles and just pressing on it. I'm going to press this one here and I think I'm going to do this one. It's just like a spiral texture over here. So all you have to do is just press on this. Now you could immediately stamp on this as well, but it will give you a very faint look. So what I want to do is I want to actually put my tag in there and you get these really nice prints and you can build on them let's start with let's find this one I'm going to do it on this side now and look how cool that is 
so you have that really cool texture in the background and I already had these platters from before so all together it turned out really cool now let's try a different tag I'm going to do one that already had distress oxide on it let's press on it just to get a ghost print it won't be as strong but it will probably look really good as well and there we go so really really fun to do and let's see I'm gonna use just the back here just to pick up some of the ink that is left over and just create this stress mark so you see I'm just picking up so the ink it looks different and that's pretty cool as well okay let me clean this just because I want to use different colors for this and I think what I'm going to do I think I really like how this the sapphire looks like so I'm going to add some more of it but I'm actually going to add it a little bit stronger because I really want to get that really dark impression now I'm going to have it all in I'm gonna let it sink in because I don't want these lines to show and let's pick a different texture let's pick this one from Carable Studio now this is a round one it has this design so it doesn't really matter which way it goes because I'm on, not going to be using all of it I'm going to be using just partial prints of this so first let's see if I can press directly in here I don't know if it gives you such a good image I think the best image yeah it doesn't go do as well but now we're going to put this first in here on the side and it should give us a really nice impression you basically never know what you're gonna get oh that's beautiful let me try the other side which is more on white and let's see what comes up yeah I really like that so it's giving me texture because this is a very textured stamp but it's not specifically giving me like an image I'm going to go here look how cool so you get that really nice texture I'm excited about this let's see which side haven't I used so the nice thing about it is that you can work back and forth with all of these and create layers so I continue working on it until I'm happy with all the tags so let's do the next one this time let's pick a different color just to be plus to have more fun I'm gonna pick the rusty hinge it's like an orange color and let's see what kind of texture I can use for this I really like this one from joggles it's really cool so let's do that and let's do this again I'm just creating the imprint on the gel plate and then I'm gonna put my tag and I don't have to put my full tag on it you can put partial tags on it so it doesn't all have to cover there we go I like that and it just creates really nice texture in the background so you see the texture there now sometimes it doesn't give you a huge big impression and that's okay as well let me put some green now and you could even just do it without any any stamps right I mean you could just create create texture that way as well but I do like it when I press on it and it creates those really nice impressions and you can see them over here oops now let's do this side yeah very very cool so let's pick another side oh this one has some stuff in the back here so how cool is that look at this impression that I got this one already has too much on here so I can't show it won't probably will not show but there's a lot of ones that I have like blank space so I mean this might take a long time 
to cover and I'm not going to show you how I do every single one just because that will take so so long and I really want to just show you the technique. I'm going to use another color the crushed olive. I haven't used this one yet. Looks to me that it will be like pretty bright which is nice. So I'm thinking to just kind of add it a little bit in backgrounds just so to finish up the tags a little bit faster before I put texture. So you see like it just actually adds color in the back because I, ha I actually have them very plain in some of sides because I was showing all the different textures on my video before. I can take even things like age mahogany. I mean any color goes really. And it looks really nice when you layer things. It's a little bit of a darker color. I think the darker colors show better. I want to use another one of the Caribou Studio ones. I have this other one that is really nice as well. It's this one. And I want to show you a little bit of a different technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put make this one a little bit damp with a little bit of water. So I'm just going to grab spray and kind of just wet this a little bit, but not too much. I don't want to have it too, too wet. And then I'm going to make the imprint. So first of all, let's see if it comes out this time when I actually press into it. Okay, it looks cool. So let me try this first. Let me try and putting this in. I'm not sure if it will come out. I think I might have wet it too much. I'm going to try it again in a few seconds. Yeah, that was way too much water. Too much water, but that's okay. Let's just try it again. Let's try and making it less watery. So what if I stamp with it again? Sometimes I put too much water, not realizing that it doesn't need so much. Okay, let's try again. Nope, it's not working yet. I know it works. I'm just trying to find the consistency. So let's try and put some more of this. And maybe what I have to do is just wet it with a wipe. So I do like showing sometimes how even trying things doesn't always work the way you want it and don't give up always try and experiment again and again so here I am putting the wipe I'm wetting this a little bit now I'm going to press on it let's see what happens this time so it's not as much water okay now it should work really nicely let's try Oh, look at that. How nice is that? Okay, let's see. I want to add it onto this one as well. Oh, that's the best one so far. I love that impression. And let's just do the back of this. So yeah, the impressions come out better with the wipe. So let's try that again. I think when they're a little bit wet, they come out better. I'm going to use a different green. This is the Lucky Clover. Just because I want to add more color to things. I think they're two one color scheme. Okay, now let's try and do this. So I'm going to grab this one, but I'm going to wet it first with the wipe. It kind of cleans it and wets it at the same time. Now that it's a little bit damp, let's put that here and let's put it here. Okay, let's see now. And I'm going to grab just a piece of this for that. Oh, that's cool. Okay, let's see. Let's find some other ones that I haven't used. So this one I haven't used.
and you see the lines so it's really a really cool technique to do I mean obviously with paint it works differently but I like using the distress oxide inks and since this is a distress oxide ink video because I did it with with the other tags in the other video it was distress oxide inks and sprays I wanted to make sure that I continue with the same thing I'm going to do on this tag so just covering it up okay let's take some salty ocean which is like a blue and the same thing but I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm simply going to first stamp it and then wet it a little bit just kind of splatter it a little bit let's see what happens so I'm going to use this one again this one other stamp I don't know I'm just trying different techniques it's just fun to experiment I always find that it's really fun to experiment so let's do a light mist on top of this light from above okay there we go I just activated it a little bit and let's see what happens I'm gonna take the back of this one because it looks like it might work really really well That's very cool actually that's not what I was expecting but you can really see the designs here let's try this oh you see the designs it actually this was the best one you can't really tell that well but let me just show you in this one that has a white all over You can really see the distress design so I'm going to try this again but I'm going to try it with with a different one now but let's put some blue on some leftover blue on some of these cards so they all match up this one kind of needs some blue okay so let me show let's try that again but I'm thinking to try it okay you know what I'm gonna get a couple other stamps from the Carable studio now these are sold out on the website but they have some amazing ones that are very similar to this so let's try these because I really want to test them so I really wanted to try this circular one from Carable studio I've used it before and it is on the Juggles uh, website but it's sold out but I'll see if I can find it somewhere else if not there's one that is very similar to this and it's really fun to use Let's see, let's try the rusty hinge again. So first I'm going to stamp and then I'm going to spray. I really like that and spraying from above. So I really went like almost like six, um, six inches above my plate. And it made a difference. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Let's see if it activates it. You can't see my sprayer only because I'm so high oops, above. Press this in and let's see what happens. Very cool. I mean, you can see the designs, not as, as expected, but let's just try anyways. So most of it is just coming off it's not coming out so texturized I'm really was hoping for a better print I don't know why because I know it's supposed to work really well so it could be that my paper is too texturized for it I've seen it done beautifully with papers so I'm curious if it will actually work on just regular print paper I'm just going to bring one just to show you what I mean so let's do that again let's put the rusty hinge it could be that my paper is too thick because this is like really thick media paper so it could be that that's the reason why it's not coming out as strongly as I want it to be so let's do that again because I know it can be done properly and that's okay I'm still getting my really distressed tags okay let's see Yep, 
yeah okay you see like when you do it on a very thin paper it comes out differently so maybe that's the reason why i'm not getting such a strong print so i'm gonna stop now because obviously i did get some good prints right here i know it works this one is also really good so i'm gonna stop oh here this is a really good one as well so there's some really good ones that came out this one came out really really nicely as well and i just want to add some more to this so i'm going to play around with these some more just to add more colors and then i'm going to bind them and show you how to finish them up once i was finished adding all the textured area i wanted to add a little bit more like splatters and things like that so what i did is i took some colors like this purple which is the dusty conquered and i just used it on my mat sprayed it on and then added some pressed it pressed my tags into the matted area to create some of it of that purple color to go on my different tags so it kind of would match all of them together and i did this in the last video as well and i did and i can do this with so many different colors so i've already done it with the blue and the orange so now i can do it with the purple okay let's see this one needs a little bit so some of them still need a little bit more distressing it if it feels like they're too plain oh and this one is really really plain i might just grab a stamp for a second to kind of add a little bit of texture to it okay there we go it's like it was missing a little bit of texture so i mean you could just use a foam stamp you can use the texture stamps all of them work really well this looks really nice oh i like this one i'm going to add some more purple here here we go this one needs a, some purple as well and if it doesn't need purple you can put blue and what's nice about these texture stamps you don't get the full image but you can really see like pieces of it coming off from different areas so i really love how some of these turned out this one i think needs a little bit more stuff on it and i'm going to check every single tag just to make sure that i got them all covered on both sides because once you're flipping through you want to make sure that it looks good so let's see let's add this and I'm going to do a mist. And now I have a little bit more water. I went to refill my water. I didn't have enough, enough of the water. And press. And there we go. You get that texture. Let's see which other ones. This one needs a little bit more purple. Did I forget some of these? So I'm going looking at both sides. And they all, I think, are done. So let me just check them. So, I mean... They're not like perfect and they're just fun distressed look. This looks like it's done. And I'm thinking I could add things to them and we'll see what I'm going to do. I haven't decided yet, but that's just fun to do. This one looks really plain. I might add some blue to this one. So let's do that. There we go. And let's add on this side as well, just because it needs blue. Okay, there we go. I wonder if like just to add a little bit of texture by stamping it. Okay, so now this one is done. These look like they're all done. And let's look at this one. Oh, this one is pretty plain. Okay, let's finish this one as well. Let's add some blue and some purple as well to this. So you can even do like two colors on the same plate spray them and just dip some of them onto this okay let's see how did i do did i go overboard i always go overboard with how much i do it okay and i don't want to waste 
let's put this in my hands are if you don't like to get your hands dirty make sure you use gloves there we go now we have it all done so i'm going to let these dry and i'm going to show you what i'm going to do with these which i'm excited about so i took all the tags and i paired them up kind of by color with what they matched and then i took the two discs from the joggles disc bound journals and i am going to basically attach them to this now you can buy these discs separately or you can buy the actual mini album the tag album and just it comes with it as well so there's two options to buy them loose or to buy them like this and they're so easy to attach and what i like about this is that you can work with the tags separately and then add them to your work so i'm going to just attach all these and then i'm going to basically show you the next step okay so i really like this turquoise one so that's going to be my cover and what i want to show you is what else you can do with these so last time i used the little texture dies from tim holtz to cut out some pieces out of this today i thought i'd do something different and to use a lot of washi tape to create images so i have some washi tape both from tim holtz and from finnabar and i thought i could add it to the background so for example i could just add a piece of this tape and it creates a very nice distress tag i could still like use some other stuff to add it as to to basically change things as well in here so for example let's see i could just go like this and then maybe fold it on the other side so I get it on both images. I mean, this is backwards, but that's okay. The other thing you can do, which is really nice, I like when, especially with with a thick washi tape, is that you could rip it. So I could rip some of this here and add it to the background. So, I mean, there's lots of different things that you can do with it. I love using things that can add texture and I'm just going to add like kind of like a strip here and there. There's one that has some words on it. So let's see what it says. Okay, so this one says, take your time. I can add it here. And this one says, I like this, your story matters. So let's, in, oh, in the moment is a different one. So let's just take your time in the moment. So we can add it here. So there's different messages in this washi tape. This is, I think it's by Finnabar. And your story matters. So there's three messages in here. So perfect. So I'll put all three of them. And let's see, what else could I add? I like this green one over here. So... So the washi tape really helps kind of create texture in a different way. You could also use tissue paper. Oops. Okay. You could actually, I didn't mean to put it. I, I don't like putting things crooked, but I actually like that. So maybe you can put the washi tape in different directions, overlapping each other. I actually like that you know a mistake sometimes happens and so um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of embellish all of these I mean I don't need to show you every single page I can show you after what I did here is a thick one this is also it comes in a pack from Finnabar this might be actually Prima I don't know. I'm going to list all the all the washi tapes I can find. And you can see if you like any of them. You can pick the ones you like if you want to buy any. Okay, so let's see. This is ripping up a little bit, so it will still look really nice. But I want to... I have this one. I don't even know who made this one, but it's very cool. Let's find a good page for this one. This would be nice to have like measurements going this way. I don't think this is a famous brand or anything. But it's very cool. So 
So this is what I mean. Just like I'm gonna add tissue, I'm gonna add this, these and all the tags, and then I'm gonna show you all of them one by one. So I'm gonna do a flip through at the end. I also grabbed some washi tapes from Dina Wakely and Diane Reevely. I'm not sure which one is whose, but I just think they have really cool designs. So I thought they would look really neat on the background. So I have a few here that look really cool. And I'm going to add those as well. So although I said I was going to show you this at the end, I wanted to just make sure that you know that I actually not only use the Tim Holtz and the Finnabar ones, but I also use the ones from Dilutions and Dina Wakely. This is really cool for this one. The colors are basically perfect. I don't know why I didn't think of these before. I think these came out last year and I never used them before. And now they're fitting perfectly into my tag journal. I do hope that they still have these available. If not, I'll put something similar. I really like these faces. I might add them to a few more. I like these faces. After adding all the washi tape in every single page, which I did off screen, I wanted to add a little bit more texture because I really wanted to finish them up and kind of match them to each other. So I took some of these stamps from Finnabar. These are small little clear stamps and I took some archival ink. Some of these stamps are brand new and some of them are repeats of older stamps like this one, for example, and this. So I had some of the old ones, even though they're available again which is great, and some of the newer ones. And I thought to add a little bit of texture in the background. So I took black archival ink and also thistle archival ink by Wendy Vecchi, because I thought the wine color would look really good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp them on each page. Now I'm gonna keep it in the album, although I don't have to, but it's already in it. So I'm just going to just open it up and just stamp on the flat area and I'll just switch it around and turn around. So I'm not going to show all the stamping, but I just want to show you the technique that I use to do the stamping. So for example, I'll take this one and I'm going to open up both archival links. And then what I do is I like holding the stamp like this. I don't use a clear acrylic block, but you can if you want to. The reason why I don't like the acrylic block is that because you're going to get a straight image, which is great for stamping if you're doing cards or if you want to get a full image. But I don't want to get the full image. I want to get a partial image of this stamp. The reason why is because I want it to look distressed. So when I'm going to stamp, I'm only going to stamp a piece of it in the corner. So that way you only get that little bit over there. So for example, here I can do just that and you get that type of response or that type of stamped image. Now, if you want, if I want to do the top, for example, I can always do this at the top as well. So that's finished. Basically that would be my finished image. So you can see it like this and I think it looks pretty cool. And then I go and move on to the next one. So for example, let's say I want to do a different stamp image. So let's say I want to do these diamonds. And this time, let's see, maybe let's find another one. This one, for example, has some of that wine color. So let's do that. And it makes it look really cool. It, it adds that extra texture. You can also go in a step in a different direction and really make everything look good. Let me see. I'm going to try to stamp on this area. Oh yeah, it works on this as well. So I can definitely work on the other side as well. And if I have issues, I can always, as I said, remove this. Let's say I want to stamp this properly. I can take this out, 
stamp well on it and then put it back in so it's a great way this is why i love the disc bound tag journals or disc bound journals from joggles so there it is so i'm going to stamp with all of these i'll just show you the other images that i have i have this one which is kind of like a script let's see how it looks i'll use some of the black i'll just show you all the images and then i'll do them i'll use them this later on in the background as well so this one kind of has a more subtle image but still really really nice and it kind of makes the washi tape blend into the background which is what i like i also have this one over here which is we'll see how it turns i think they're like it's like a ledger and i see some wine color over here so i'm going to definitely add some here now this one is more faint so you can't really see it let's try with the black Yeah, it's so hard to see this one because there's so much in the background. And the last one I want to show you is the bricks. I think I might add it on this as well. Just because I want to show you how cool it looks. So there's the bricks. And maybe some on the bottom here. And there we go. So, I mean, I can add double stamping if I want as well. So I'm going to go around to every single tag and basically add a lot of texture with the stamps because that really makes a difference. And then I think I'll show you the flip through. I also want to add some threads and things to the top here. I originally thought I was going to basically put a string through all the holes together and tie it up. But I think that will be too hard to do. So either, I don't know, I'll think of what type of threading do I want to put on this to make it look really like really cool so let me stamp and I'll get and I'll show you all the pages afterwards so here is my final tag journal album I decided to put a twine at the end it's a black twine and I just basically tied it up to both ends and then you can just open it up my other tag journal was had strings basically on every single tag but this one i think was just nice to leave it like this so i'm gonna go do a flip through through this and show you all the different things that i added on it this tag journal specifically focused on stamping and different types of stamping that you can do and i just love it and i used these this is the small talk by tim holtz to add all the different words and sentiments and all the nice washi tape from the different companies really made this stand out. So now I'm going to show you all the pages. I just love how it turns out, all the little eyes that are there. And every single one is a message that I wanted to include. I could also add some journaling and some doodling on this, but I think I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I really like it and I just don't think it needs anything else. It just turned out really cool and I'm happy with the results. If you're not happy with them, obviously then change and do something different with it. But if you are happy with the way something looks, then you just leave it. Because truthfully, I could continue on and on and on and on. But there's a point where you kind of think to yourself, what else could I add to this? Like really, like there's so much you could do. You could like doodle and stamp and do so much more. And... Usually I like adding borders to things, but I think it looks pretty finished like this as well. So I'm happy with it. In the other tag journal, I did add doodling and I made borders, but this one I think is fine the way it is. So the washi tape and the stamps really helped. And we're reaching the end. And here we go. And that's the last page. So thank you so much for joining me today on another tag journal journey. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. Also visit me on my Instagram and my website. And thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye.